All right, ladies and gentlemen, nice to see you. Um, so I'm not going to collect the homework for today, but I'm going to go over some of it. Now, Olivia, I don't have the time to go over all of it, so get your, get your, get your questions ready. Oh, see? I know. She's cool. She gets to teach today. All right. But if you would, let's get yesterday's homework out and take a look at it. And I have time to go over a couple of questions and then I'll go over today's lecture, if that's okay with you. Okay. Yeah. It was 4B, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, 4B. Where? What? Who? Can you go over 7? 7? Is that a graphing one? Yeah. So that's the 2G. X. Okay. So problem number seven, two G X. And I have to realign my board. Hey. Uh, All right, so All right, I'm going to use the parent function as my guide to do this, okay? So let me draw my parent function up here. And the parent function looks kind of like that negative 3, 2. All right. <laughs> okay. This is my parent function. They're calling the blue one g and x. So we will do this next one in red. So what does the 2g at x do? What did it relate to in yesterday's notes? The y. So the y-axis changes. So we double it all, right? OK, so our y-axis is going to change. So I'm going to look at this point. I have negative 3, comma 2. So what would that point change if we're dealing with the y? Negative 3, comma 4. There we go. So negative 3, comma 4. Oh, if I can make a comma, that'd be better. All right, so negative 3, comma 4 is right here. Is that okay? Yes. And then I have negative 2, comma 0. looks like that point down there. So it's going to be? Do we add it or we multiply it? I thought we multiplied it, right? So this is still going to stay here. Okay, this, I'm just going to call that point, just to make it easy, I know it's not exact, but let's just pretend it is. I'm going to call that 0, comma, negative 2. So where should this one go? Negative 4. Yeah, so 0, negative 4. And then I have 1, comma, 0. So that's still going to be at 1, comma, 0, because if we're multiplying, multiply by 0, you still get 0. And then 3, comma, 2 is going to get to 3, comma, 4. So that did a stretch. Agree? Yes. That's all we did. So notice I took important points and focused on them. I didn't sit there and say, gosh, what's going on right with this? I don't know. OK? 
Okay. Yeah. Can we do twenty-three? I I hope so. Okay. We're gonna find out. Twenty-three. Okay, so that is a few different sh types of shift, right? All right, so our parent function looks like this. It's like negative 4, 4, negative 2, 1, 23. I'm just drawing the parent function up there right now. And then 2, negative 1, <coughs> and then... All right, so the red is our P at X. Let's go. Okay, it's one netting. And you said 23, correct? Yes. So 23, it says to do negative P at X plus 3. Minus 2. All right, so when you have multiple things listed, I think it's easy, rather than identifying the points, I think it's easy that you look and say, okay, I am going to identify all of the shifts that will take place. Shift, left, 3, because of this. Is that okay? Yes. Anyone stuck on that? Okay, now we're not done shifting. This is going to shift us down. Okay? And then what does this negative out front do? Okay, it reflects over x axis. Is that right? No, y axis. Y axis? Y axis? So this one? So if that flips over the y axis, what does that do to all of my x values? Okay, so we change the sign of our x values? No? The y. So am I rotating over this? Or this? Negative out front. Sure? Let's see, a negative out front. What's it going to do? What did our notes say yesterday? I don't have them right now with me, so I can't see it. that negative do? Does it really flip it over the x or the y? It is indeed one of them, but I want you to figure it out. So think about this. We're looking at p at x right now. So let's say we knew, let's say we had some function f at x equals 2x plus 3. Okay, that's just a straight line. I want to do this now. I want to put that there. I want to put this right there. What is that really going to do? Where is that negative being multiplied? Would it be multiplied on the other side as well? Could I do something to one side and not do it to the other? No. no. So this other side is also being being multiplied by negative. Okay. So what values are being put in? My input or my output? If I put a number in, if I put three in as an x value, what's reacted with it? The y. So this is going to change the sign of my y values because you're multiplying by a negative 1. Okay? Now, when you say multiply by negative 1, that's totally correct. If it's positive, it becomes negative. If it's negative, it becomes positive. If it's 0, no change. Okay? So change the sign of the y values. All right. Stick with me on this graph. Ready? I'm going to start right here at this point. Okay? Let's do the first thing first. What does it do first? What do we have listed? One, two, three. There's my first shift. What else? Okay? Then my y value needs to change. So right now I'm at negative 7, comma, 2. So this is going to go to negative 7, comma, negative 2. See what I just did? So that point now just did that. Let's take this point. That's negative 2, comma, 1. 
Let's do the first shift. Left, one, two, three, and down, one, two. That was kind of weird, okay. All right, now let's take this point, do the same thing. Shifts left, one, two, three, down, one, two, reflect it back over, goes right here. You see how I just marched it? Now I'm going to go one, two, three, down, one, two. Where does this go? Did I do that right? And so that was that point. Now this point, one, two, three, down, one, two. Positive three. Yes or no? You see how I went in phases? It's really hard to look at an entire graph saying, okay, everything on this graph, it's going to shift left, then it's going to shift down, and then it's going to actually flip over on all my y values. Do like a uh, what? Now, so I honestly look at this. Work from the inside out. Start here, look here, look here. If there's something out here, then you also have to take care of that. Go ahead. So my problem is not having the work drawing the graph outside of work, uh -huh. which is which is key. Uh -huh. It's always the beginning of the the thing is the x x x. Okay. Yeah. So like this whole thing, if it was just the negative p at x. I had just this. Ooh. So the red was, so this would have done this here, 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 here. Does that make sense? Yeah. But what, what starts, what goofs my mind, because I'm broken, you guys aren't broken, what goofs up my mind. When I know, okay, I know it flipped over one of the axes, but as soon as you have other shifts, once you get done, let's face it, we started with the red, and then we went to the, the black. It's hard to fathom, and they're going, gosh, it doesn't really look like the picture I thought I should have, because it had right, left, up, down shifts as well. So that's where it gets goofy, and that's why I think you find the, the most important points. So if you can definitely see points labeled, make the adjustments to those. I'm not looking to see if you can draw the most perfect curve. Okay? You have a calculator for that. That makes sense? Yeah. Cool. Yes? Sir. Um, with something like something like this right now, am I supposed to just change it with something like this? Oh, okay. So number 20 is this same thing. So let's do this as a purple. So number 20, we can also draw this in there. So I have 2p at x. And then minus 3. Okay? My parent function was what color? Red? Red. red. Okay. So we're going to base it off the red. I know we have other graphs. So we're not going to worry about it. Is that be okay if we do that? Okay. So this means this is going to go down. One, two, three. Stop. We okay so far? Yes. But what did that 2 out front really do? It's increasing the y value by what? Two. two. So we're multiplying by a factor of two. So what's my y value here? Negative two. I mean, one. So, so I came back here. So I went down. I went down one, two, three. And then move whatever my new value was by a factor of two. So let's do, so that was that point. Let's do it here. I'm going to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, multiply by a factor of 2. So that's going to go here. Take this. I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and this is going to come down the same line as that. At this point, I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3. I'm going to multiply that by a factor of 2. So now I'm at 6. Uh-oh. Um, okay. Uh-oh, I lost my picture. All right, and then this last point is going to do the same as this one. So this one comes down to 
here. So So the hard thing on this one, you can't see what's taking place horizontally when you're multiplying by a factor because it's stretching vertically. What does a horizontal line do when it stretches vertically? It stays pretty much the same. So you're seeing your major pulling take place here and here. It's by a factor of two. Yeah. So if the two is in front of the entire function, then should it be multiplying by two instead of adding? Okay. Because we're shifting by three first, go with the simplest first on the shift and then think about what the function is. Okay? That'll take care of it. That make, and I, I know it's, it start, it's, it's making tingly big things in your head. I know that. But let's continue. I think today's is going to build upon this a little bit better. Okay? Last question. Increasing the y. I said last question. But what do you got? So if there's a negative on the We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to it. I promise. It's going to cover today. You watch. All right. So hold up on turning that one in. Get it done. Okay? I want to start the notes. Okay? Absolute value. Absolute value. It's the distance. Now, absolute value is a really good thing to use to show the shifting right, left, up, down, stretch, compress, all those kind of things. It works really well. Okay? Absolute value is the distance away. So this is 8. This is 9. This is 7. This is 7. This is 2. Distance. It's not only the distance away from 0. We're actually going to start talking about the distance away from a critical value. Okay? That's kind of a pre-calc term that you'll hear in a year, but we're still going to talk about it. Does everyone feel comfortable with that? Yeah. Yay. Um, where people get stuck on this is like, oh, but why isn't that 11? Well, you do the operation first, and then you take the absolute value of what it comes out to. Okay. Why did this one become that? It's the same. Hey, absolute value of negative 7. 7. All right. We want to graph y equals absolute value of x. Now, your calculator does this really well. We're going to get into that in a little bit, too. So this is a linear function. I'm going to show you what this looks like. I don't want to fill out the table yet. It is a V-shape. So it goes this way. And I'm just making all the points. It looks like that. Sound good? That's the parent function of absolute value. That's the most basic absolute value you could do. Now, in my opinion, some people will differ with me, but in my opinion, I always feel it's most important to go to the most basic function first, the parent function, draw that kind of light or with a different color, and then do your shifting around. Okay? I'm pretty sure we could fill out this table, no problem. Just looking for ordered pairs. But one term I want to talk about is this point right here. It is the turning point. Okay? That's a basic math term that's used. A lot of times you've heard the turning point referred to something else when you're dealing with a parabola as the vertex. Is that okay? Now, everything we do with this works with parabolas. Everything we do with this works with things that are raised to the third power. Everything we do with this works with things that work to the fourth power, fifth power, tenth power. If you do the sine, cosine, tangent, that's the sin, cos, tan buttons on your calculator. Anything you do with the LOG button on your calculator and the LN button, those are log and natural log. Anything you do with the exponential, which is e to the x. All of these are the exact same rules, but it's best to use absolute value to see how those rules apply to it. All right, so graph. That's what that graph looks like. Agree? Remind me to unmark you from absent. I have a deadline, but don't let me walk out. Okay, now, what does, what does this graph do in comparison to this? This is a straight line. This is an absolute value function. It goes to the right. So this is the function we're going to use. Highlighter, 
Oh, you there before the highlighter. Find it. Highlighter. There we go. Okay. I changed the red line to the yellow line. It's A to B now. Now, somebody asked yesterday, why is it shifting opposite of what we think? Well, when it's grouped, when it's grouped, your mind wants you to say, oh, it should shift left because it's negative. But here, it actually shows that it shifted right. It is right. Okay? So, when it is grouped, when it's in absolute value, when it's in parentheses, when it's underneath a radical and all clumped together, when it's on top of a fraction as all the numerator or all as a denominator, that kind of thing is going to shift opposite of what you would think. Is that okay so far? Mate? And so I'm pretty sure you all could fill out a table and fig start discovering, oh, there it is. Trust me, this is what the graph looks like. I do have a turning point on this graph. It's right there. That turning point is the point 3, 0. As a parabola, it would be called the vertex. It's where it changes direction from going down to going up or come going up to going down. Can I move on? Yeah. All right. First thing I want to do, graph what? I want to graph the parent function. So I'm going to graph this first. And by me doing this, it's going to allow me, that should be not rounded, it's a also nice. That's going to allow me to see this. Okay? That's my parent function. Everything is going to be based off that. Now notice, you have a really good turning point, And you realize this has a slope of 1 over 1 and go to the left of negative 1 over 1. Okay? Up one right one, up one left one. Trust me, the slope works. Okay? This right here is going to shift left. How many? Two. Now, I'm not too concerned about the entire graph. I'm going to look at the turning point and say, you know what? This shift is left to here. And it still grows at the same rate. That's what this graph looks like. Green's our original. Red is our new function. Did I go and worry about a whole bunch of other points? No. no. I saw my pivotal point, my turning point, was great. What is this one going to do? Right, right four. Right four. All right, so if it goes to the right four, my parent function is the green. I'm going to go one, two, three, four. And it still grows at the same rate. So the blue is the shift of the parent function, which happened to be green. That's it. That's all. There's not much more. This operation that we just did here with absolute value is the exact same operation that will take place with all the rest of math. It's not like you get to going, you know, oh, Mr. Sharp, my function is. 3w raised to the fourth power plus 16w raised to the third. You know what? It's going to shift right and left and up and down and stretch and compress in all directions the exact same way as everything else. When you look at those kind of functions, you're not looking for an infinite amount of points to do. You don't have time. Look for the ones that are important. The important one here, turning point. And you saw the slope as 1 over 1 and negative 1 over 1. I know I'm saying negative 1 over 1. You're like, wait a minute. Negative 1 over 1 will be down 1. Okay, move the 1 on the bottom. 1 over negative 1. Up 1, left 1. Question back. So anytime it's in being an absolute value, it's always going to be that root? It'll be? No exception? Right. Okay, but if I start putting it in parentheses, it's still going to shift the same types of ways. Where you're trying to find an important point. Okay, and this one's our turning point. If we had a, a, ver a parabola, our vertex becomes our important point. And then we start realizing, hey, pattern graphs a certain way. And pattern graphing works the exact same way in everything, too, which is so cool because it's not like, okay, now I have to learn 
y equals sine x and graph that. Oh, great. No, it's good. I'll do the same thing. All of the growth stuff is the same. Yeah. So does that mean if you have like a negative on the outside, it doesn't exist? We'll get there. It's coming. Oh, wait. Like that? Yeah. Good. All right, can I stick with green for my parent function? Yeah. Is this okay? Yeah. Okay, so the parent function really is not part of my answer. I'm just using it as a guide. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, if you put the parent function on your test or quiz because this is making sense for you, do it. And don't be like, oh, I need to erase it because Mr. Sturp's going to think I have the wrong girl. Uh-uh, you're using it as a tool. It's really cool. So here's a really cool thought process. What is math? Math is thinking. That's all it is. This right here. All right, so first thing does what? Two. So left two. Okay, so I'm just going to keep in mind, okay, I'm going to move to the left two. Uh-oh. What is the negative out front do? It flips it upside down. Flips it upside down. Okay? So this graph was growing at up one, right one, up one, right one, up one, right one, and up one, left one, up one, left one, up one, left one. Now it's going to go right one, down one. Done. Done. You've heard the term slope. I know you've heard that because you had algebra one at some point in your life. Okay? Slope works with these. And then when we get to things that are curved like parabolas, we call it, we change our term slope to pattern graph. It's just a way of getting it to work. Okay? I'm pretty sure I could fill out my x, y axis without any problem at this point. I've drawn this. You can sit there and look at your graph and say, dude, it's right there. Can I move on? Am I going too fast? No. So absolute value makes a V shape. We just showed that it can make an upside down V as well. And you have a negative out front. Okay? The part of the graph we call the vertex, H comma K. The vertex is where the graph changes direction. That's what we've been calling an important point. The chain of where it changes direction. It also has something called an axis of symmetry. Anything you graph in math, unless you are the kid, when you first got that graphing calculator, you're like, sweet, y equals sin, 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 cos, 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 tan, 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 log, 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 ln, 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 sin, 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 x. Hey, look what the graph looks like. And your graph looks like someone just scribbled on your page. He's like, why does it look like that? Because you're modifying a number like a billion times. It's like, hey, 1 comma 0, do this. Okay, 1 comma 1, do this. And it's doing it an incredible amount of times. Is it a real function that exists? Sure. Are you going to walk into the real world going, check it out. That's the sin cos tan 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 sin 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 cos tan ln graph. People are like, <laughs> I think you're right. I used to get the idiots all the time in Vegas. You walk up to the craps table, people rolling dice. Hey, that field bet looks like a great bet, page two to one. Yeah, look at all the numbers that comes up. <laughs> yeah, you have a 20% chance of winning. It's a horrible bet, but it's this big thing that you can bet on. It's like, right, I'm going to bet on that. It's an idiot bet. All right, how can we move this graph up or down? Okay, so the graph that's up there right now is this. If I add or if I subtract a number and it's outside the grouping, that moves it up or down. Here we go. <coughs> Problem number six. Shifts left and? So this went left one up. Does it still have a slope of up one, right one? Yep. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm squeaking while I go through puberty for another time. Why did it do? Yeah. Wait, when did you go into the left? Yeah, go to the right. Yeah. It's not really there on that wall. Yeah, you're right. You are right. I got too excited. All right. Right one. Up four. 
the right one up for. Still grass there. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. Did I, I don't even have my parent function there. You want to know why? I don't need it yet. Because we know 0, 0 is where the parent function takes place. It's pretty easy to shift around from 0, 0. It's not like you have 1 and 2 thirds, comma, 6 and 17 eighteenths. Okay, shift that 3 and 1 eighth. Or two to 8 fractions. All right. This one. Left, 3. Am I right? Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah. Down, two. Down, 2. And? Flip it over. Flip it. Okay? All right. So we know 0, 0. Yes? yes. Left, 3. 1, 2, 3. And down, 2. 1, 2. Okay? So here's my new changing point. It's still going to graph, though, at the 1 to 1 growth rate at this point. There it is. No, if I put a lead coefficient in front of that x, it's going to change. Okay? We good? Yeah. Happy day? People starting to feel good about themselves? Yeah. Me too. Can I move forward? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. All right. Oh, sweet. Identify the vertex. So this is going to have a changing point at negative 8 comma negative 21. And it's asking for a line of symmetry. Oh, okay. Well, you know what the line of symmetry always is? X equals whatever your X value is. It's a vertical line. And whether the graph, op graph opens up or down? Up, because it's positive out front. Yes? Help me. Vertex. Up or down? Down. Axis of symmetry. X equals 9. Done. This one. <coughs> Ooh, that'd be no fun to graph. X equals negative, uh, negative 12, right? Yeah. And axis down. of uh, down. Done. Wait, how do you down? Oh, okay. Outside. Outside determines if it opens up or down. <laughs> May I move on? Yes. Are we good? Oh, yeah. is not in the house. I missed that too. All right. So, if you have a calculator, does anyone need to borrow one? Here, they're coming out. Anyone? One. Two. You okay? Anyone? Oh, you're right. Ten to one, he drops it. <laughs> Anyone else? Anyone else? There were so many more hands up. People just like put them down. Feel like, dude, he's throwing stuff. I'm out. All right. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. All right. Because we're using a calculator for the first time in a while, we need to reset stuff because it's goofy now. Yes. All right, second, memory, reset, all RAM, reset. Woohoo! Is anybody's calculator in a different language? Because some village idiot in one of my classes decided to put it all in Dutch. Why? Because sometimes messing with people is fun. All right, we're good? We happy? All right. Um, I'm going to go now to y equals. Shouldn't be anything in there because we all reset it. Yes? And I'm going to look at the notes rather than flipping back and forth between the pages. Is that okay? Yes. So it looks like I have. Ready? I'm going to show you where to find absolute value. Eyes up here. Ready? Okay. Look at the screen. I can't see it. That or my trifocals aren't working. Math. Still with me? Find the math key? Math key? Yep. It's red on the, on the thing right now. Okay. I'm going to move over one. And you see where it says abs? Yeah. That's not a reminder to do sit-ups. Okay. <laughs> so you just hit number one. Now it has the absolute value. So the cool thing is, now I'm going to do the absolute value on my calculator. Okay. Now, 
because we're cool and we have lots of colors, let's plug all kinds of things in. Okay, so I have one half. Still with me? One half abs x. One third. Notice I'm putting in parentheses. Yes, there is a fraction key, but we're not worried about finding it. All right, so that's the first column. Still with me? Anyone want to take a shot at what these graphs are going to do? Are they going to be fat or skinny? Fat. They're going to be fat. It's going to be opposite of what you think. Okay, there you go. The blue is the parent function. The red one is the one-half x. The one-third x is the black one. And the pinkish one or the purplish one is one-fifth x. You put a fraction out front that is between 0 and 1 to make your graph fat. You want to know what else? other graphs become fat when you put a fraction between 0 and 1 in front of it? All the rest of them. All of them. So what you're doing is you're doing a, a third of or a fourth of whatever your output is. All right. We good there so far? All right, watch this. Now I'm going to just change these. Let's see, I'm going to change that to a 2. I'm actually going to use the delete key rather than retype these in. And then this one's uh, 5, right? I'm going to go 5 in there, and I'm going to go delete, 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 delete. Oh, fiddlesticks. Absolute value. X. And then the last one is 3.5. 3.5. Okay, I'm putting a number out front. It's going to make them tall and skinny. My first one blue. Boom. So how do you know what the graph will be narrower or wider? If you have a number that is greater than one out front, it's going to be skinnier than the parent function. If you have a fraction that is between 0 and 1, it's going to be fatter. Now, some of you are going... Yeah, but there's so many other fractions. Okay, if you put 16 over 5 out front, 16 over 5 is the same as 3 and 1 fifth. Is 3 and 1 fifth a larger number than 1? So it's going to get it skinny. Okay? Dude! So our general form, our general form from our calculators is this. Okay? This is the same equation we'll use. H comma K is our vertex. Notice it's opposite value. Remember he said if it's grouped, it does opposite of what it should do. Agree? Yeah. Cool. All right. Your axis of symmetry is x equals h. Okay? This is a vertical line. It's imaginary. We don't necessarily have to put it. It becomes a line that we can fold our line over on top of it. Okay? It's the creasing line where we can have it show on either side. Um, symmetric line opens up. Opens up, opens down. Okay, so these are all the, where the fractions take place. You're looking really at the value of A. The value of A, if it's negative, it's going to open down. It's going to make it grow faster. It's going to make it grow skinnier if it's a number larger than 1. If it's a number between 0 and 1, a fraction, it's going to make it fatter. That's basically what this screen says, and I'm not filling out everything on there. Can I move on? Yeah. All right. I'm going to do the parent function real quick, but the only part of the parent function is this. Still with me? Yeah. Start at 0, 0. All right. Left 4. Yes? Up 3. Oh, see? You guys, if you guys weren't here, I'd be getting things wrong. And down. It's going to open down, and it's going to grow. We're going to multiply by a factor of 2. Downward. Okay. Let's do this. Right four. One, two, three, four. Still with me? Up three. One, two, three. Still with me? Putting a dot. 
Nothing happened to that dot. But you remember it grew at a rate of one to one? Okay. It's gonna open down. It's gonna go right one down two, left one down two, right one down two more, left one down two more. Done. Stuff cool. A lot of you are like going, dude, like where was the stir up the other day when you were teaching us stuff that seemed like you were teaching us, you know, some ancient weird ritual? All right, moving on. Yeah, baby, we got a fraction. All right, let's see if I can get it right. I'm going to make this point right here. Slow. Left. Three. That, down, five, and then two-thirds. Does it still open upward? Yeah. Uh-huh, but it grows at a rate slower. Okay, left, three, one, two, three. So with me? Down, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it used to go right one, up one. Now it's going to go right one, up two-thirds, and left one, up two-thirds. It used to go, it's going to be fatter. Okay? So our parent function, if that two-thirds wasn't there, it would go here, up one, up one. So it would be skinnier. Yeah. So right one, up two-thirds, which is 0.6 or 0.7-ish. All right. You guys are all packing up. We still got three minutes. I got plenty to do. Or is that the last slide? Dude! Where are we at? Help me, help me, help me. Uh, on left, left three. No. Nope. Up three. One, two, three. What does the two? It's steep. Right one, up two. Left one, up two. It. What that will start doing is it's going to start. So for now, it doesn't matter. Right. There's only one place that you will ever see it in math in high school, and it's called the step function, which is like we teach you, we're like, hey, we have to fit this in, and there's like the last 30 seconds of the semester. That's where it fits in. Okay, thank you. All right. Oh! Inequality, what do you think you have to do? You either shade outside or inside. What should you pick? Outside. Uh, pick a test point. And then plug it in, see if you make it true. If you make it true, that's where you shade. All right, and this is just making functions off this. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's almost weekend time. Wow. Right? Don't give us homework. No, you got homework. All right. We did, we did what last time? Through 4A. All right, so would it be horrible? We had 4B last night. Yes. So let's get 4B. 4B done. And 4C done. Other than that, I have nothing more to teach y'all. The video is going to be done.